me our uh, council meeting to order, 611. Um, we stand for the prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Disclosure of canary interests for this evening's meeting, Daryl. Councillor McLaughlin. Uh, item 4A-1, rezoning. by Kathy Regier, seconded by Dave Mackay, be resolved that the Council of the Township of Whitewater Region adopts the agenda for April 20th, 2016 regular meeting. Any discussion? All those in favor? Opposed, if any, carried. by David Mackay, seconded by Kathy Rager, be it resolved that the Council of the Township of Whitewater Region approves that the following bylaws be introduced, read, dealt with, numbered, signed by the Mayor and Clerk, and sealed and recorded in the bylaw book. 1. 16-04-858, rezoning, Ross, concession 1, WML, part lot 3, 168 Snake River Line. I'm going to do them one at a time. All those in favor? Number two, 16-04-857, rezoning, Ross, concession nine, part lot two, Grant Settlement Road. All those in favor? Carried. Moved by Kathy Rieger, seconded by Dave Mackay, be it resolved that the Council of the Township of Whitewater Region adopts the minutes of the March 23rd, 2016, regular council meeting. Any discussion? All those in favor? Opposed, if any? Carried. by Dave Mackay, seconded by Kathy Rager, be resolved that the Council of the Township of Whitewater Region approved the attached schedule of general purpose accounts in the amount of $1,782,744.64 and water fund accounts in the amount of $20,599.52 for the period March 1st to March 31st. 2016, and all of and that all of the above accounts be paid. Discussion. All those in favor? Carried. Don't know, Sean. Sean Wagner. Their uh, first delegation, Sean Wagner, MOE. Well drilling project. Could you come forward? It doesn't matter. I'll sit here. I'm just going to introduce them and then they can get the presentation. So, sorry. <coughs> hey, 
Uh, my name is Sean, <coughs> Sean Wagner. I'm a supervisor with the Facilities Department at the Renfrew County District School Board. And with me are Vasily and Magdi. They're from the Ministry of the Environment, so I'm just going to kind of give you the Coles notes of what this entire project's about, and then they're going to deliver a little presentation to kind of give you the, the, the nuts and bolts of it. So, About eight months ago, the uh, Ministry of the Environment approached the school board, <coughs> and they wanted to collaborate with us in order to... Uh, they were starting a project in eastern Ontario where they want to monitor the, uh, the levels of groundwater in different areas so that they can start to collect some data over a period of time over the next number of years. And obviously, being a public entity, they were looking to see if they could utilize some of the uh, schoolyard properties. You know, we've already implemented uh, it, this at Opiongo. We've already done it here at the school in Cobden. We're looking at Eganville now, and Beechburg was one of the other ones that we were hoping to do. So basically, they come in and they drill one or two wells, and off of that, uh, they, they'll put a fence around it and make it pretty and make sure if they do any damage to landscaping, they clean it up. Rob McKinnon, uh, his, his business, McKinnon Well Drilling, has been the one that's been doing the well drilling for us. And then they put in some monitoring equipment that they can shoot via satellite back to uh, head office, and then they can monitor the ground level water from remotely, and then they come up and, and obviously inspect it here and there. Uh, it's a bit of a win-win for the school board as well because some of the science classes can participate in this and have some, you know, can have some impact on class learning and, and student learning. So uh, the issue with the Beechburg School was they're on a septic system, and the proposed drilling sites that we wanted to use were too close to the septic system, so we couldn't do the wells there. There was one other area that we were hoping to do it in, and it was in, a, in an area where staff, students, and community members had just uh, created a, a, a uh, they planted trees and flowers and shrubs, so we didn't want to disrupt that. So what we were hoping to do was drill just on the outside of the school property, just outside of the fence, which would be in the, basically, the edge of the ditch, and that would be township property. So uh, the guys here are going to show you a presentation to say exactly where it is, exactly what the purpose of it would be, and, and basically all it would be is you know about a four-foot you know, pipe coming out of the ground by eight inches. That's all it is, and then they would fence it off and have a, a lock gate on it if anybody needed access to it. So, so that's kind of the the Coles notes of the project, and these guys will give you the specifics. Okay. Sorry, Tara's here from the MOE. We weren't sure if she was going to be able to make it because she traveled up, but she's here now. So. Well, they're not going to drink out of it, so it's not a real big deal. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for inviting us uh, to this uh, uh, council meeting. Uh, my name is Magdi Udatallah. I'm a senior hydrogeologist with the Ministry of Environment uh, in Toronto. Uh, with me here is Vasili. He's also a senior hydrogeologist in Toronto. And 
Tara McDonald. She is a supervisor uh, in our district office in Ottawa. Uh, we are giving this presentation uh, to show you the work that we are planning to do uh, in the county here and in uh, the township in particular. So uh, during the summer of 2012, um, the area of, of, uh, of the county experienced drought and uh, level one, um, level two um, uh, of drought was declared in the area um, through the Minis Ministry of Natural Resources. And the Ministry of Environment office in Kingston, Eastern office in Kingston, and uh, our district office in Ottawa um, approached our uh, uh, main office in Toronto to establish um, a monitoring system in the county. Um, there are no uh, active groundwater monitoring wells in the county, and they wanted information about the drought, and they wanted information about uh, any uh, effect of climate change. Um, so the ministry um, planned to drill uh, six wells in key areas uh, of the county that experienced a drought during 2012-2013. Uh, the monitoring data will uh, be collected by the ministry and will be shared by the county, the municipalities, uh, the Ministry of Natural Resources, our district office in Ottawa, and our regional office in, in, in Kingston. These are the four areas that we selected for the drilling, uh, and mainly, as uh, Sean mentioned, uh, school properties that we, will, we are targeting, um, because we need these monitoring wells to be in public land. We don't want to uh, go to a private land, because of the private land, they tend to change uh, ownership, and we want these monitoring wells to be uh, established for long-term monitoring, and that's why we are targeting uh, public land. Um, the, the four areas here, uh, two of these areas will, will host uh, two wells each. So um, in Beachburg, we're planning to do two wells. In Cobden here, we did two wells. Those are four. And then uh, down at Renfrew uh, Town, we are planning to do one. And uh, at Obiango High School already established one well there. So um, as I mentioned, the three wells um, already drilled in March two in the um, school here in uh, Cobden, and one in Obiangu. Uh, the three remaining wells were planning to do them uh, sometime in the summer of 2016. Um, these um, uh, wells are funded by the uh, joint program between the Ministry of uh, um, Environment and between the uh, federal government uh, and provincial government. All of these wells will be equipped by, by monitoring equipment. Um, uh, Sean mentioned that. And we put uh, satellite uh, uh, kind of a sensors that will uh, allow us to uh, collect data uh, remotely from these wells. Um, and each well will be uh, fenced, or the well area will be fenced, so no vandalism and uh, will be protected. And we will put a sign showing this is a monitoring well owned by the Ministry of Environment. If there is any question, contact this number. So a uh, person coming around the area will, will know what is it, and uh, he or she will have uh, information um, uh, to, to, uh, uh, to collect if they need. Um, as I mentioned, uh, the area is also is going to be a small area. It's not going to be a huge, big area. Uh, this is the, the, the wells that we, we drilled in the county uh, uh, and, in, and in this township. So two uh, wells are, are in uh, Cobden Public School. At the corner, uh, we finished them in March break, and the one uh, to the left here is uh, in Obiango High School, uh, at the back of the school uh, site. So the well will look like this at the end. Um, so we're planning, as uh, uh, Sean mentioned, two wells in, uh, in uh, Eastburg uh, area. Uh, the area is known for um, uh, uh, shallow aquifers, a sand and gravel aquifer on top of uh, a limestone aquifer. That is from the geology data that we collected from the Ontario Geological Survey. That's why we wanted to drill a shallow well to give us an information about the shallow aquifer in the area and a deep well also to give us information about the deep aquifer. Uh, what we, we did, uh, we selected a number of locations, Sean mentioned that also, in, within the school property, but unfortunately because of the utilities, because of the septic tank, uh, septic bed, we could not find a suitable location within the uh, property uh, itself. 
So we would like to go to the road allowance. Uh, uh, Sean mentioned that it's uh, just off the, the school property and within the township property. Um, the two wells will occupy approximately five meters by five meters area, a very small area. Um, and the wells will be drilled away from existing tree. We know that there is a, in the area I showed you in a moment. This is just an aerial photograph of the school. And you can see the, the uh, red uh, rectangular there shows, showing approximately just this is the area where we're targeting. Uh, and to the right hand, this is a photograph showing that big tree. We're going to drill somewhere around that tree, but not at the tree location specifically. We would not touch the tree. So we either go south of the tree or north, uh, depending on the uh, availability of the land on those, those areas. And we will be very close to the fence of the school. So at the end, the, the fence that we're proposing to put, we're going to fence the area outside and attach it to the back of the fence of the school. Um, and as I said, it's going to be labeled. It's going to be um, a, a gate with a lock and uh, a key. And we're going to be left with uh, the school uh, custodian, so anybody who wanted to access the wells, he or she can access the wells at any time. Um, just to give you an idea about the program that we're running across the province, that we are monitoring groundwater uh, across the province, this program called the Provincial Groundwater Monitoring Network. Uh, the program started in 2000, uh, the year 2000, and uh, we did this in collaboration with uh, 36 conservation authorities and a number of municipalities in areas that, of the province that they don't have conservation authorities. Um, and the network um, right now has um, uh, close to 484 wells across the province. And uh, the, the main purpose of this uh, network is to collect baseline groundwater information. Um, if municipalities or the province or the Ministry of Natural Resources or any public um, agency in the province wanted information about groundwater, they can uh, go to our website and we publish uh, the data on the website, uh, water quality and water quantity and water level um, from all these uh, 484 wells. Um, the data has been used intensively uh, for source water protection by the Ministry of Natural Resources, by the Ministry of Environment, by the conservation authorities, and by groundwater consultants. Uh, this is a map showing um, just uh, across the province from uh, south all the way to the east of Arawa. These are the 36 uh, conservation authorities, the colored uh, areas. And uh, you can see that the Renfrew County, there is no conservation authority, and we do not have wells uh, in this area. And the, the nearest area is the Mississippi Valley Conservation Authority, which is the brown area, um, which is Quebec or just lower than that, and, and you can see that there are a number of wells within the Mississippi Valley Conservation Authority. Within Rideau Valley also, we have a number of wells there. And um, the other uh, part, they show that the northern part of the province where we have uh, wells in uh, Sault Ste. Marie and uh, Sudbury and uh, North Bay areas. Yeah, a monitoring well will look like this. This is just an example of uh, an out, like a, a view from outside, um, uh, the green box. Uh, to, the, to the left hand, showing uh, the well equipment, and that is the rain gauge, and uh, also there is a solid solar panel uh, for the monitoring equipment. Uh, to the left here, also uh, to the right, sorry, there is um, a white box that's also a well, and with a, um, a solar panel for uh, the power. Um, as you can see, it occupies only small area. Uh, from inside, we have we put our monitoring equipment. It's just uh, like uh, uh, electronic data loggers and a telemetry system to connect remotely to the well. So that is just to give you an idea of what we wanted to do and to give you an idea about our program. And uh, if you have any questions, we are open to answer those questions. Thank you. Questions, uh, Councillor Jackson? One of the questions I had written down was, will you share the information on one of your slides? It said it was going to be on the website, all your um, results of, of your testing. And uh, I didn't notice the website, um, as long as some of our staff, because um, I know that they're 
doing some studies with regard to the aquifer, and it might be also advantageous to have that information as well if you're collecting it. So as long as uh, staff can get a hold of that website, that would be most helpful. Yes, definitely. Um, the website is active, and uh, the data has been uploaded um, um, uh, like on a daily basis. We, we update the data from these wells, and as soon as we have these wells are, uh, established and uh, the data collected from them, the data also will be uploaded into the website, and it's, uh, it's a public website is accessible, and we can give the contact to uh, the staff here in, in the township, and they will be able to download the data. Uh, also, we will give them uh, our contact information in case if they wanted recent data that is not uploaded, they can contact us directly and we can help them. Um, another option also, if they want us to show them anything related to the well, we're, we're open and we can come and, and take them to these sites and show them uh, what we are collecting. So. Great, and I guess the other thing was you obviously have permission from the school to attach to the to the existing fence that's there as well. Yes, we do have uh, permission from the school, and uh, we, we Sean can speak about that. We have uh, an agreement with the school, yeah. because these wells, when, when, when we put them in, in their property, uh, we put an agreement between, between us as the Ministry of Environment and the school board uh, that we're taking care of these wells, we're drilling them, and the purpose of these wells, and, and so forth. So that is something we can, we can show it to you if you want. So it, is an agreement required to enter into an agreement with the municipality for the road allowance, or have you dealt with that before, or just, just a simple motion? Okay, that's a good question. Um, there are two options here. Um, either we can uh, use the existing agreement with the board that we have, uh, or we can draft a similar agreement that we, a very, very generic agreement with the board and show it to you, and if you are, would like, you can, we can sign it jointly the municipality and the Ministry of Environment. Basically, the, the well will be uh, named, because this is a regulation from the ministry that will, the, the, the township name will be on the well. And we will take care of the equipment and we will take care of the funding for the drilling and for uh, monitoring and so forth. Uh, so it is very simple generic uh, agreement, as I mentioned, and there are two options. Either we can, uh, maybe Sean, we can speak about that. We can keep the agreement that we have with the board or we establish another one with the township. It's probably just as fine, the same agreement, probably the same wording. And then I guess the only other stipulation I would want is if you ever wanted to stop the monitoring process in the well, that uh, it would be removed as well um, at your cost. And that everything else sounds what I would expect in agreement. Councilor McLaughlin. <coughs> My, my question is to Steve, because this is in Beechburg, and we're, we're thinking about doing an aqua for study. Uh -huh. would, would these wells be any benefit to us if they were on our own municipal properties, Steve? Oh, they're absolutely going to be a benefit. Um, um, JP2G's hydrogeologist, Andrew Buzza, and I have all already been in discussions about doing just this. Um, but we're also looking at developing our well, so this this is very timely. Um, it falls right in place. Uh, we're also probably going to develop our, our our dug well, um, clean out the holes in it and whatnot. So this is excellent. So I, I guess my question was, are, are where they're they're planning to put them? Are they are they a benefit to us, or would it be better had it been on our own property? Uh, they're fine where they are, but if uh, you gentlemen wanted and lady want to drill a well at our uh, somewhere on the property at our plant, that'd be fantastic. That, that's where I was coming from because yeah. it'd be a win-win situation. It would save the municipality money. Uh -huh. It would also give you instead of having two wells in the same spot, you could have one there and one on our own property that we own where we would just have to go into uh, uh, some kind of a, an agreement with you. If, if That's just a, a thought because it saves us money, it gives you two, two different spots rather than having two wells in the same area. It's uh, like out near the water plant if you're familiar with Beechburg. Okay. So, um, we, can, we can definitely look at that um, location. Um, this, this program right now looking for six wells to establish the program. But in the future, that doesn't mean that we're not going to add more wells. Okay. 
uh, we are going to collect the data from these wells, and we're going to uh, evaluate the data and see if there is a need to, for additional wells. And wh we might come to you again for asking for permission. Permission. We might come to the school board also ask for permission for additional location that we see key to our program. Um, definitely a good idea. We can. We are here tomorrow. We are looking for additional location. We can look at the property and see the well that you have. And if the location is suitable and secure, we can definitely uh, select it for drilling. As long as within that zone, we have a zone that I don't have it here in, in my computer, that we select it within Beachburg area uh, that potentially has two aquifers, shallow and deep. And if the property is within that zone, uh, we can definitely go to it. Is some, somebody as, available yeah. for a site tour tomorrow then? Or? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, okay, then we can... I need your call. Contact numbers. Yeah, definitely. We have the numbers, and we can we can arrange after this meeting yeah. that uh, a time that we can come out. Councillor Mackay. Uh, the only problem I see is uh, where you want to put that two wells by the school. If you look across the road, there's a, a hardware store, and they have trucks turning. Kind of a wide turn. I don't know how big your fence is going to be. Would that be a problem? Or? That's a, a good question. I think. Um, what we can do, um, you saw the, the, the wells that we put in here in, this, in the school. We can put, put these wells, like, uh, not, um, we, first of all, we will put them close to the fence, yeah. as far as we can, we can go. We don't want to disrupt the, the land within the school property yeah, yeah. because of the shrubs and so, so forth. And we can put them in, uh, uh, like, uh, side by side. Yeah. So the area we're going to occupy is going to be a rectangular area. So how, than, how wide would it be? It would be far, like two and a half meters like from, from the right. fence. Okay. And we can make it uh, seven meters that way. Yeah. And we can make it five by five. Yeah, no, I think that yeah. two and a half meters would be good. Just yeah. that they turn in with the big truck. Yeah. yeah, really they just need enough room to be walking around yeah. the equipment to do any maintenance repair or, yeah. you know, yeah. to work yeah. on it. So, I mean, if you had yeah. a, a yeah. body length and arm length, to this side, toward the road on the other side of the, the well, I mean, it would be ample. So yeah. that's why they would run the parallel, yeah. the length of the road, yeah. and this would be a rectangular shape yeah. instead of a square shape, square unlike shape. Cloud, than we did just because we wanted to utilize two fences that were already in place and, you know, yeah, put the well in. Yeah, if it went along the fence like that, it would be perfect. Yeah, it wouldn't be a problem. But went too far, the trucks would swing. Yeah, no, we did look at that, and uh, we realized that that could be an issue okay. there. So. But if, if, you know, if, if this other option you know, works for you guys, and yeah. it's a win-win. I mean, it obviously would save the township some money and yeah. and uh, do a, be a bonus long-term. Definitely, yeah. Just further to that, one note is uh, um, because it's a public business, uh, before you would do anything, you would go and talk to the owners so that they know what you're doing, bring them up to speed. That would be absolutely prudent. Sure. Councillor uh, Olmstead? Yeah, just a question for the public works manager. We, uh, I think uh, maybe Bill should have a look at the location as well. I don't know if it impacts uh, snow removal or snow plowing, or uh, if you know the location. Yeah, understood. The one other minor thing that we did bring up uh, for that location, if we did it beside the school there, was there is one neighboring house, and again, their septic location. You know, we were kind of going under the assumption it's probably in the backyard because of where the house is situated, but we should verify that so that we're not within, because that was the primary issue with the school itself, that we were in too close a proximity to the septic, yeah. so it's one thing we would need to verify if we went with that location, but that's just due diligence that we'd have to look after, so. Okay, any other questions? Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Gentlemen and lady, do we need to give you an emo a motion right now, or uh, can we wait till you get back to us with the additional information and then get, 
and then make the agreement at that time. Like we're, we can give you, uh, in principle, the uh, direction to go ahead and get the information and get back to us. If that's okay, we want to do it that way. Okay. Councillor uh, Mackay and Councillor Regier, is that all right? Okay. We'll just table that for the moment then and carry on. To a point. With the understanding that an agreement will be coming forward, yes. which we will adopt by bylaw. And you, I'll give you my card. We can be in touch about that or Steve can. Okay, thank so you. So we can just wait to see which location we end up deciding on, and that would that determine would, which yeah. agreement we, you know, whether we can pick back off the board agreement or whether we need to. That's right. That would be uh, a lot better, a lot less paperwork. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Kevin, if you want to come forward, front and center, carry on. JP2G presentation. Okay. Uh, I'm here this evening yeah. just to do a quick update on the Municipal Class EA uh, process and where we are and uh, what is needed from Council going forward. Um, some of this is, I, I, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but we just, we have to be cognizant that this engineering study and uh, the sewage treatment solution has to follow a process. Uh, and uh, the Municipal Class EA has a number of steps and, uh, that have to be addressed and ticked off, checks and balances as we go forward in making decisions uh, on, uh, so that we don't get... Oh, yeah, your mic. Oh. You get your mic turned. Oh, you're getting... Oh. Okay. So we don't get too far down the design path and uh, find out, you know, we have to sort of backtrack that we don't have either the patience or the resources or the municipal uh, willingness to, to spend money foolishly. So that's the intent of, of, this, of this municipal Class EA process and we're on track at this point. <clears throat> so phase one and two of the Class EA involved an evaluation of options that we identified. They included the plant upgrade options uh, and also looking at reducing flows into the plant, looking at septic management, and then, of course, do-nothing option was also considered as a benchmark to compare against those. As presented uh, earlier in the year and, and, and at a public meeting that was held in January, I believe, uh, we recommended a, a solution um, that being number 4A, which is a, to construct a new mechanical system in parallel with the existing plant uh, to include tertiary treatment and sludge storage. Also in conjunction with that, all, part of alternative 2, which is to reduce flows into the plant. Um, we have obtained public imp input on uh, the preliminary report and have circulated that to key agencies and have also obtained their comments. Um, Based on those, we've gone from a recommended solution to this This is where we are at the termination of, of phase two of the process. Just quickly, um, a fairly ugly looking diagram, but uh, the existing plant uh, facilities are here, so uh, the intent here is, is to to construct a, train, a, a similar type of system of treatment. So in the event that this breaks down or has to, and when it is up being upgraded after this is in, in use, we, the municipality has sewage treatment before it ends up into the, it, out the outfall and into the wetland. Uh, that's it in a fairly general schematic thing. And going forward into phase three of the, of the Class EA, those design concepts, those boxes, all the bells and whistles of those boxes start to evolve by engineers, of which I'm not, so I won't comment any further. So here's the plant site. Uh, the property in red is, is what the municipal valley owns. This is about a one acre site where the plant is. And so our original evaluation of, 
of environmental impacts around the whole site in phase one and two was about 300 meters around. Now we're, we're concentrating basically on what improvements have to go on to this plant site. So an area of influence is about 150 meters. The MOE has design guidelines to consider noise, traffic, odors, and things like that. So that's basically where we're at. Um, our initial discussions with the ministry and I think, believe is in part of your package as part of our status report is um, you know, we're confirming the, 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 the scope of work that will be required to do an impact assessment. This is a provincially significant wetland as everybody is, is aware so we have to do a, a certain amount of evaluation in that area. <coughs> so just a quick recap where we, where we started. Uh, started in November and we had our public information meeting. We have drafted up responses to the agencies and uh, those are now in the, in the final report. Um, specifically, I believe what I've done is tab tabulize them uh, and summarize them in tables so they're quite easy to, to read what the agencies have commented on and, and what the general public have indicated. Um, so going forward, uh, and actually even uh, in starting in last month we started s s determining the scope of what field works needed to go ahead and we're in that discussion right now and I believe we have a conference call with the MOE and Ministry of Natural Resources on Friday. So that is my... Yeah. Have you have three resolutions and if there's any questions I'd be happy to answer them. Moved by Dave Mackay, seconded by Kathy Wegger, be resolved that the Environmental Services Committee of the Township of Whitewater Region recommends to Council that Alternative 4A upgrade existing water treatment plant or construct new mechanical treatment system including terrinary treatment and sludge storage in conjunction with selected options and Alternative 2 reduce ex there any extraneous flows to the water treatment plant be selected as a, a preferred solution for the purpose of proceeding with the alternative design concepts for the preferred solution phase three of the work plan. Any questions? All those in favor? <laughs> Carried. You, you want? <laughs> I had a I had a shorter version, but yep. oh, we're going to change service from count committee of the township to council of the township. You want me to read that again, Daryl? Because no, that, no, that that was quite quite well. I thought well you were done. in enough pain to be going through it the first time. All those favor. We already did that. Carried. I just have one question that doesn't relate to any of the motions, but I guess I'm kind of wondering, when do we start construction? <laughs> that was an 18. Well, this, this timeline here basically proposes a study to be done by the end of the year. Um, there, once the engineers get involved and it's going back and forth between the Ministry of Environment, um, it, it takes some time. Uh, to, uh, to f take those little concept boxes and put all the bells and whistles in it. I guess it's the easiest part to say. So if the study is completed, basically you, at that point you have a preliminary design of a plant and, uh, and, and from there it's quite easy to just flip it into preliminary design and go to either a design build option or whatever. So I guess my concern is with regards to the funding. Um, is there a funding deadline um, when this project has to be done? Because it appears to me that um, when we, when the township applied for the grant funds, that it appeared that a decision had already been made as to what, um, how it was going to be done, the sewage treatment plant, and approximate cost. And typically, the governments like to approve. 
uh, projects that are shovel ready. And in this instance, it doesn't look like this was ever shovel ready to go. And um, I just hope that we're not on a timeline with regards to when that funding has to be utilized and when the project has to be complete. Um, because I don't want to lose out on that funding at all. Yeah, uh, Christine? Yeah, in the original application, and this is the standard process, I understand, for this kind of a project, um, the end date was defined as springtime 2020 for project completion. So, it, it, yeah, it, it's an easily uh, a year of construction, and that may not even get you into refurbishment of plans. So far, we're on track, as I... We are on track. Thank you for clarifying, clarifying that. <laughs> Any other questions? Moved by David Mackay, seconded by Kathy Regier. Be it resolved that the Council of the Township of Whitewater Region accepts and approves the work plan and budget from JP2G Consultants, Inc. and Muncaster Environmental dated March 14, 2016 in the amount of 12000 plus HST for the preparation of an environmental impact study, EIS, for the Cobden Waste Water Treatment Plant. Questions? All those in favor? Carried. Moved by Dave Mackay, seconded by Kathy Regier, be it resolved that the Council of the Township of Whitewater Region accepts and approves the work plan and budget from Kinnick Heritage Consulting, date March, dated March 15, 2016 in the amount of 15,000 plus HTST for preparation of a stage one archeology span assessment for the Cobden Waste Treatment Plant. Questions? I hope it's 1,500. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, okay, 15, sorry, I apologize. That's not a typo on that. Yes, okay. I already knew that was what it was supposed to be. Yeah, 1500 sorry. Okay, and I, uh, just to finish the comment, so that is to perform a study from what? The, the um, archaeological and heritage? Yeah. Um, is my understanding most of that um, property is, is landfill. It's actually, it's man-made. So I, I would think that anything that they're going to find there has been moved there already. So I, I would hope that they're not going to find any that's what you do. There. Yes. There. Okay. I would be anticipating that's why it was 1500. Councillor uh, Councillor Jackson. Thank oh no, sorry, you're next. Councillor uh, Oh no, my my question was answered with Councillor okay. Olmsted's question. Okay, Councillor Jackson. I guess I'm wondering at what point can we pass um, either it in the budget so that each time there is a bill that we don't have to pass a motion for all these expenses. I mean, um, we've accepted the grant application and can we put it on a budget line item and then put it as to be funded by um, borrowing for Infrastructure Ontario and the grant um, or however you want to put it so then each time these invoices come up we don't have to approve them each time because it's you know, we're as we get closer and closer it's going to get more and more and more and it's just oh, yeah. prolonging oh. the agony I'll throw that over to uh, Marcia if you'll speak to that yes that's no problem we can do that okay we had originally asked for the uh, the monthly report and bill from JP2G, but I don't think it needs by any means to be the sub That's right. quantity to. Okay, uh, Councillor Olmstead. Well, now that we're here, um, we talk about redundancy in the plan quite a bit, and I, I did take the time to read through most of the 65 pages this time. And it talks a lot about redundancy, but it, it seems like the reports we're getting are redundant as well, where I think I've seen that we, we've approved this 4A for the last six months, yet it looks like we're approving it again, 
as of right now. So is, is it is it because of the various stages of public consultation and that kind of stuff that we're, we're seeing the same reports come up over and over and over again? And I would hope that you, this will be the last time you see anything to do with 4A. Yeah, but that, you're exactly right. Because of the process, so going forward, before I go to the agencies with a recommendation or to the public, which I did, we did in January, and actually, as you've mentioned, going forward just for the grant application, although, um, so uh, the process sort of carried that through and tested it through public and agency consultation. So at this point, that report is finalized and uh, we move on from here to, to design. You may. Because part of my fear is that we've been approved for in total nine point three million dollars and we're going to come in at nine point three or above million dollars with various reports and whatever has to be filled out. If we can do this thing for seven million dollars then we should be doing this thing for seven million dollars. So I, I I really hope this is the last time I see that you know another report, another report, another report. It's the same report that I seem to be reading over and over and over again. I really as Councillor Jackson said I could hear it in her voice, like, let, let's, let's cut bait and, and get this thing rolling. Fair enough, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, as, as Kevin alluded to, this, this is the process, uh, as painful as it may be. Um, what's going to be more painful is uh, dealing with the agencies and getting them on board with, with what we want to do. That, and that's the part where this could really get bogged down. Um, maybe Kevin could comment a little more on that, but uh, you know, we, I sit here and I say we're on track. We're on track. But when it hits the, the agencies, it may really, really slow up, waiting for responses and comments from them. I think Steve's correct, and, and the, the rationale that this thing, this alternative, and the evaluation has been tested, and, and I appreciate reading 65 pages or whatever, and I had to compile those things from a bunch of engineers and planners, so I, I know your pain. Um, but, you know, the municipality is committed through a funding application and through this process to that solution, and it's going to be very difficult, or it certainly gives us the ammunition going forward to negotiate with the ministries that this is how we're going to proceed and it's been vetted agencies and public and and by resolution of this council so it's it's, it's a very important part of the process so that we you know uh, we don't want them taking us off on the tangents on you know, different things yeah. we know what we want to do and we have a good idea of what that price is going to do and be and we want to obviously keep the price the, uh, the eventual solution within within the, those options. Reeve Miller. Excuse me for coming in late, and perhaps this question's already uh, been answered as well. How secure is our grant one third, one third, one third? And the reason that I bring that up is a situation in Empire where it, something like that has fallen apart. So I just how do, what assurances do we have where the grant situation stands? Excuse my voice, I'm froze. <laughs> Christine? Our contract has been signed for the provincial and federal portions, and Marsha has done pre-consultation with Infrastructure Ontario. Uh, we are pre-approved for our third of the, we have to borrow, so as far as I'm concerned, um, Nailed down. Just to be clear, you're, you're assured of our one third, so it's one third federal, one third provincial, one third municipality, correct? Yeah. And we know Cheryl Gallant put the, the feds in. Uh, is it automatic that the province is in for their third, or is, are you selling them on it? That's my oh, question. No, no. Our no. contract is signed with Great. the provincial yeah, and federal signed. government portion yeah. of yeah. six point. 
two-ish million dollars. Perfect, because there is a situation in the, down the road there where there, something went wrong with one of those grants and the province uh, wouldn't kick in, and now it's all on the, all on our prior. It was in the paper. I'm sure you've read it. Yeah. Well, let me jump up and down. I would. I mean, we don't mean. Okay. Any other questions? All those in favor? Carried. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Kevin. Next we have uh, Bernie, but Bernie, is, is, this is just... Um, He'll answer some questions if we ha if we have any questions, but he's really actually not going to be presenting anything. It's kind of old news. So I have.
might be just as well to uh, mm -hmm. slide. So basically what's happened is Hydro's put their foot in front of our projects. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. Yeah, on, on Ontario 1 or Ontario Generation, whichever one of them do it. Uh, yes, go ahead, Chris. That, uh, so the seventy six to $80,000, would that be for the lifespan or is it? 20 years. 20 year span. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. I guess they should run for another five or ten after that, but but you don't get that money. Now you're talking $6, you're talking that three to four thousand dollars a year in revenue. Yeah, I don't. I wouldn't know. I'd have to ask James, who does the numbers. Now this also, as we have mentioned before, uh, this is no outlay of money from the municipality. As I understand it, no ORES takes all the risk and. So the revised numbers are out of an original projected revenue of 108,524 mm -hmm. minus 32,000. That's just my opinion. Oh, <laughs> should be it should be. Well, I just found out today that that one has just okay. dropped off. Well, if if that number stands firm, yeah. then that brings us to a total projected revenue of 76,524. Now you could confirm that if. Yeah, it's not much because the, the rates are gone way down since 2015, and yeah, since, the rate, down. since the rates are gone, way down. the rates are gone down. It takes longer to pay back this debenture now. So instead of paying it back in six years, you're looking at 10 years and 14 for the roof mounts. Mm -hmm. Pardon me, the ground mounts. So it's unacceptable the ground mounts on their own yep. to pay something back in 14 years. Now. Uh, when you're considering it, you've got to keep in mind that we're not outlaying any money. No, you're not outlaying, we're not outlaying, any, outlaying money. any money. And Whatever we get, we get. And apparently there's supposed to be dividends coming back too on this yeah. stuff. So yeah, we still get the 6% dividends on it. Three on top percent, of that. Three, I think. At some point. Um, calculation, I didn't do any of it. <coughs> now, the other, the other point of discussion was in 2017, we enter into a new system that has been proposed and is supposed to come out, which is, uh, if you just hit that real net quick. Me net metering. Net metering, yeah. If you just quick discussion on that. Well, I don't know very much about it, but is that all the new rules and regulations for net metering should come out sometime in 2017 for preparation for 2018. And it could change based on what it is there now. So whether you want to go ahead now or wait, it's up to you guys. I'm not going to say one way or the other. Christine. From my understanding of net metering, which again is slim, and I'm not an engineer, but from the information that I have received, that would allow our facilities like municipal garages that consume a lot of hydro with the doors open and the trucks going in and out to basically the, the power generated can feed into paying that particular bill. You're feeding the power into paying that building's usage. Um, but I understand there are also restrictions. There's a certain number of months that it has to be yeah. used within, right. etc. Every LDC has a different set of rules and regulations. I think Hydro One has 11 month credit. So you got to use that credit up. So we overproduce in the summertime. And if you don't use all that credit up, you'll lose it back to Hydro One. But Bernie, and you don't get I, nothing for it. You and I had the discussion in my office that if Council decided to go ahead with this um, ground mount and the one roof mount, yes. that the net metering could be added on top of That's that my understanding when of it, it also. becomes a reality. It could be added as another separate entity. But there's an awful lot of ifs and could be here. Uh, Councillor Jackson. I guess my only concern, and it's a huge concern for a number of people that are paying Hydro One um, for Hydro One electricity, is while ORES is actually doing the project, some of the funding is coming, unless it's an ORES advantage, um, they're not giving us the money back, but Hydro One, in fact, is giving us the, money, the revenue, correct? Am I right in stating that? If we have a Hydro One account, it's Hydro One that's actually... No, the money would go to ORES and they would give it back to Right, you but it co actually comes from Hydro One. Oh, well, definitely, yeah. Right? I would say so. Um, my concern is that there has been such an outcry with regards to Hydro One rates 
And um, we are actually, in fact, um, making it worse by taking those fundings. Because, and, and I mean, it's the, the worst ones are the ones that, you know, got the high-end return at the beginning of this that we have to continue to fund from Hydro One rates from individuals. And again, we're paying much less per kilowatt hour than what Hydro One is actually going to pay us to create the energy. So I'm not convinced that it's in the good interest of the public to enter into, on public property, to enter into an agreement such as this that will, unfortunately, increase their rates um, in the end. If that makes any sense at all. It's, <coughs> well, I it's don't an understand what you're saying. That it's going to increase rates. Yeah, I'm one of the guys that has it from the, the high end. But uh, it's, it's an agreement that's, uh, I'll be honest with you, if we don't get it, somebody else is. It's mandated by the Energy Board that it has to be paid by hydro uh, generation. It has, they have no choice if we put it up. But if we don't do it, it leaves a hole open for somebody else. And it will happen somewhere in Ontario because it's Ontario-wide, right? Um, so it could make be. make it right. It certainly doesn't make it right, and, and I think the utility <coughs> may have made a lot of bad decisions, but I'm not a manager of it. Um, it, it the last thing that came through to us was the, the last increases are because, are because we're over, sorry, we, 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 saved, we saved a lot of hydro in Ontario. And the last increases are because now we can't pay for the utility with the less usage, so now we're paying more because we've used less. So it's uh, it, it's very difficult to get a handle on where it's making sense, if you will. But one of those costs is paying for these agreements that are in place. That is one of the costs that they've budgeted for. So it's like you budget for uh, a year of electricity or budget here, and if we have a deficit, then next year absolutely the rates have to go up. So it's the same sort of thing. Um, you know, you may conserve water if you were all metered, um, but you're still going to have to pay the same cost. So if you're not using the same amount of water, then you are going to have to increase your rates. So that's what I'm saying is we're contributing to the problem. I would say you're going along with everybody else. But is that the right thing in the public interest? I'm, I'm just, uh, I'll be honest with you. If we can make $3,000 a year to put it against our budget and Hydro has to pay us, that's just, somebody else made that decision at Queen's Park. I, uh, I'm all about this municipality and very little about that. Well, but, but in the end, the, the whole thing comes down to very simply. Net metering starts in 2017, and yes, there's a, how it works or how it's been proposed to work is you put up solar panels, you have to buy them, and you generate power all day. And then at night, when you don't have any solar, that comes back from your account in the grid. So you're going to have to have you have to have two meters, one in and one out, and your account will be on average proposal right now. I believe is one year. So at the end of the fiscal year, anything that you have not used in excess past the year point is the entire production is kept by uh, whichever grid you're on. Like it's either Ontario generation, power generation, or, or one, or or it would be kept by ORPG or ORPC, or it would be any of the any of the utilities. That will that's the, what the Energy Board is presenting. They get to keep that uh, power. I would say that you should size it if you're going to go net metering, so you don't overproduce. Well, that is that, that's critical in my opinion that you, you are better to come up with a system to save money but not overdo it because you're giving your, you're giving your utility away. 
So you would, if you're going to use uh, 50 kilowatt hours at your utility uh, garage, then you want to be short a couple of kilowatt hours at the end of the year. So you'd have to buy it, but it's 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 a system that, in reality, at this point. And this is only my opinion from hearing the way it's been described over the last couple of years. It's the one that has made the most sense so far. I would say the Cobden Arena is a roof mount. And that looks like the most advantageous one of all the projects that are left. Just do one roof mount. The ground mount is not much in them, really. Yeah, it's at this point there's not enough no. return on it. Councillor uh, Olmsted. For, for $3,000 a year, I think I'd really like to understand the net metering concept and you know what if we went ahead with this I would certainly hope not to jeopardize uh, potential of net metering most of the public works sites where you know maybe we don't have much of a hydro bill uh, on those sites but if we go ahead with, with this, any of these projects and we find out well because you're on this you can't go ahead with a net metering project I think for the amount of return we're getting on it, I, I think I'd like to wait and see what that whole net metering for 2017 would look like. And I, I, I've done some reading on it as well, and it's pretty much as you state, it's, it's you're net metered for the amount that you produce for the grid versus how much you use from the grid. Um, but I don't know enough about it yet to make a yeah. they have make said a that, that's a, Sorry. They have said that you can put two sites two of those on one site, one micro pit and one net meter. Yeah. Uh, uh, but and you can't I put two micro pits. I think what Councillor Olmstead is saying is uh, we've I'm already sure. <coughs> seen that we've been refused where they really you can't understand how come. Uh, and so what I believe what you're saying, uh, Councillor Olmstead, is we would like not to jeopardize being able to use net metering. So maybe the biggest advantage to us would be to to use ORPC, OPRP, anyway, get the, I hate acronyms, but to get them to install this net metering and go through because they're probably, like they're part of our company, or we're shareholders, and we can look at that in the future, but be one of the first to get set up at that, as opposed to the last to be set up in, in this other one. I can take that back to James, yeah? Yeah. That, that, you guys are more interested in net metering right now. Is this sold. is this a kind of a feeling of council that we'd, we'd I know uh, Councillor Olmstead would like to to do that. Councillor Jackson doesn't want to do the present. Well, I think it, it makes the most sense in my ma mind because then it directly affects our rate payers. Exactly. You know, that it's an expense that we're not having to pay. Um, and not just a revenue-based uh, portion. It, it's directly affecting our bill, which would, in fact, decrease the overall cost, which I understand the revenue also decreases the overall cost, but it goes against directly our expense. 